Billy, I'm, I'm looking forward this weekend to your interview with uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, she is, uh, she's uh, been talking about uh, this uh, master class she's going to be doing online. Uh, and of course, her detractors uh, on the right have been attacking her, saying, oh, she lost. I don't want to hear about it. And I just sat there in bemusement thinking, this is exactly who you want to talk to. Anybody that's ever succeeded uh, has has had setbacks. Abraham, <laughs> from Abraham Lincoln to like pick any any sports star, and uh, I'm just absolutely fascinated by her story and and what she's going to tell. And you got to sit down and actually talk to her about it. Yeah, we talked about this master class she's giving on resilience. That's that online education platform that people can sign up for. But it turned into a conversation about so much more. We can talk about the would-be victory speech that she gives in the master class, the speech she was wanted to give on the election night 2016 and never did, of course. But we talked about a lot more. She had some advice from Democrats and Joe. She talked about Republicans, many of whom she served with in the United States Senate, had good feelings about, had worked with, maybe disagreed with, but thought they shared something in common until Donald Trump came along and she started asking herself what happened to them. Here's Hillary Clinton. This guy has no basis at all in law or fact. There's not a single credible piece of evidence. He does not care. He wants to destroy this country's institutions. And sadly, the Republican Party has gone along with him. And for the life of me, People who I knew that I served with who fall in line on the outrageous accusations they make, whether it's against Dr. Tony Fauci or pretending that what happened on January 6th wasn't an insurrection. Honestly, they have hung their spines up on the wall as they walk into their offices. They have no conscience. They have no spine. And we are seeing the results of a party that has been taken over by a demagogue. And we know from history that's not good news. That's scary news. And we have to do much more than we're doing now to fight back against this very organized effort to undermine our elections, to put into place laws and regulations that are contrary to fair process, to fair voting. And I I worry that still too many people are like, oh, you know, it can't be that bad or it can't, it can't go that far. It's a failure of imagination. And I wrote after January 6th that one of the findings after 9-11 by the 9-11 Commission was a failure of imagination. After January 6th, I think it still is a failure of imagination that the Congress, through its committees in the House particularly, are trying to get to the bottom of what happened. There is no um, sense of duty or honor on the part of many of the people that worked for Trump. They don't want to cooperate. Probably they're complicitous in some way, and they don't want that to be uh, proven. But I am very worried. and. It didn't end with his defeat. And, you know, we, it's a time to decide whether we're going to be a grown up country or not. Are we going to give in to all of this, uh, all these lies and this disinformation and this organized effort to undermine our rule of law and our institutions? Or are we going to stand up to it? You know, it, it is a time for choosing, Willie. Those are some uh, important, important uh, comments. And for those listening to Hillary Clinton talking about her former Republican colleagues and saying, well, she's just a Democrat and they've been at odds for some time. Uh, I, I, of course, as you know, I've had the same experience with many people who were close friends, uh, who I was in the political bunker with uh, f throughout the 1990s and into the early 2000s. Uh, people that I knew, uh, friends w were friends with, friends with families who we're just unrecognizable now. Uh, people of principle uh, who pushed so many uh, of those principles aside when Donald Trump came into town. And it, it is, it's, it's, 
It is without a doubt. I was going to say this is the most confounding thing I've seen in in my political life. I, I, I think it's the most confounding thing I've seen in my life. Period. Yeah. Uh, personally, professionally, or politically, I've seen nothing like it. And it's also important to note Hillary Clinton, Willie, had great respect among the Republican colleagues she worked with in the United States Senate. Yes. Trent Lott bent over backwards talking about what a hard worker she was. So her talking about her former Republican colleagues, she's talking about people who were friends and colleagues that she doesn't recognize anymore. Yeah, I think there was genuine, genuine shock from her and from a lot of people and from you with your friends that there were all these lines that were crossed and you thought people would say, okay, that's enough for me. You can go all the way back to the campaign when Donald Trump criticized John McCain. Would that be too much for some Republicans? What about the Muslim ban? And then going all the way to January 6th and talking about the 2020 election. Those were lines that were crossed and Republicans, even if they criticized them briefly, always fell back in line. And I think that's part of what surprised Hillary Clinton about people like frankly, Lindsey Graham and others that she worked very closely with as a senator. She also, Joe, talked about Democrats, though. We got to talking about what happened in Virginia. She had some thoughts about how Democrats need to run if they want to hold on to Congress in 2022 and hold on to the White House in 2024 and not just focus on some of those deep blue issues that many Democrats seem to talk about most. Here's what she said. I think that it, it is um, a time for uh, some, you know, careful thinking about what wins elections, and not just in deep blue districts where a Democrat and a liberal Democrat or so-called progressive Democrat is going to win. First of all, we don't know what the state of the map is going to be after all of the redistricting. It appears as though the Republicans in a number of states are doing their best to eliminate um, as many seats that Democrats can be uh, competitive in. Uh, and so we've got to be very clear-eyed about what it's going to take to hold the House and the Senate in 2022. I understand why people want to argue for their priorities. That's what they believe they were elected to do. But at the end of the day, nothing is going to get done if you don't have a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate. And our majority comes from people who win in much more difficult districts. And our majority in the Senate comes from people who can win in not just blue states and hold those wins, as we saw didn't happen in Virginia, um, but can win in uh, more purplish uh, states. So look, I'm all about um, having vigorous debate. I think it's, it's good and it, it gives people a, a chance to be part of the process. But at the end of the day, it means nothing if we don't have a Congress that will get things done and we don't have a White House that we can count on to be sane and sober and stable and productive. Claire, I suspect you can relate to some of those comments, having to want, run and win in exactly the kind of place she's talking about. Hard places for Democrats to win. I think she's also obliquely referring to people like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. You say, well, you can criticize Joe Manchin all you want, but if he doesn't win in West Virginia, then we don't have the Senate. Yeah, you know, Hillary Clinton pointing this out is really, really a big deal. And I hope that the progressive wing of my party takes it to heart. The power comes from a majority. The majority comes from the middle because we're not talking about places that are bright blue. We're talking about places where they do care whether or not parents feel like they have any control over their child's school. Forget about what specifically they're teaching. It's about understanding that in these times, parents and a lot of these parents in the suburbs, women, mothers in the suburbs, came to Joe Biden because he was the candidate of the middle, not that he was the candidate of the extreme. And if we don't get that, if we spend all our time talking about the things that bright blue places want to focus on and not on the things that moderates want to hear, we are not going to hold the majority. And Mitch McConnell and either Speaker Donald Trump or Speaker Kevin McCarthy uh, will completely blow up the last two years of Biden administration. And the things we really care about 
could really go by the wayside, God forbid, that Donald Trump get reelected to another term as president. So, uh, Claire, in listening to Hillary uh, Clinton speak about uh, where, you, you know, you have to win in, in districts that are difficult to win in. You've got to win in states like Missouri, uh, like you did, states like Arkansas, like Bill Clinton did. Uh, that's the key. It, it reminds me of uh, I just an old David Shore uh, tweet from a couple of months ago. Of course, uh, David uh, was uh, one of the, the smart guys running uh, Barack Obama's data operation. Uh, and he cited uh, a Nate Cohn uh, thread that was so important. And, and he said that everything Democrats thought about the 2008 election were wrong. Barack Obama's strength uh, did not come uh, from, uh, well, I'll just read it here. Obama's decisive strength was among white working class Northerners. As a result, major strategic, ch strategic choices flowed from this erroneous interpretation of the American electorate. Obama pushed gun control and especially immigration, rewarding the group for seemingly deciding the election in his favor. Big swaths of the GOP establishment embraced it, too. In doing so, a lot of the conditions for Trump's victory fell into place. Democrats, meanwhile, leaned into a strategy that basically omitted the white working class entirely. A huge white education gap has emerged in Obama's ratings by a fall of 13 or maybe 14 points. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.